Okay, so in this video, we're just going to take a look at how you would kind of properly uh, export some models that you want to bake in Substance Painter that contain multiple components and or components that are very, very close. So first, uh, what I'm just going to show is what would happen if you just do not set this up correctly. So if we, for example, were to grab this object here, and I've already built the high poly doing it the way that we always do it, where I've just taken the objects, given the edges a decent little bevel, so we can kind of get rid of that. And this would be the low poly. So first things first, we notice that we can't see the edges. Everything's kind of got that weird blobbiness to it so that's what we want that's your your shade smooth which has to be set on because remember we're we're baking the normal information so we don't want any of that information coming into substance painter so we would just take export fbx goes over here remember the only thing that doesn't come on by default that we always need is your selected objects I've already got it saved. That's your bookshelf low. I'm going to save it again. And then we're going to pull out the high as well. File, export, FBX. Selected objects is now turned on, so that's good. And we grab high and export. Okay, so we've got them done. And I've already pulled in the low. And so we're looking at the materials. And so on this one here, both the books and the bookshelf itself, they're all in the same material. And so if we just do this the way that we have been before, where we're just going in, Baking the mesh. I'm going to leave it at 4K so it actually does it pretty quickly. Grab our bookshelf high. Then we leave everything at default. And just let it bake. And then hit OK. So just getting it to bake the whole thing and kind of hoping it's going to work out. These are the kind of errors that you're going to get. So here we're seeing where the edge of the bookshelf burnt itself onto the books. And we're also seeing where the books kind of lean into each other. So this book here has a bake of this edge on it and this book has this baked right into the corner as well. And then these ones that are really close, there's almost an indent of this book being punched onto that one and vice versa. It's kind of the opposite, but over here as well, this line here has been cut. So, so in order to do this properly, what we need to do is just make sure that everything that is going to overlap is separated out. So let's just go back in to Blender really quick and just hide our high, open up our low. So obviously, yes, the bookshelf and the books themselves need to be separate. But what's more is the books themselves need to be separated, but not all of the books. You can bring them in and kind of, you know, book one, book two, book three, book four, book five, six, seven, eight. And have all those lined up. You will have to make sure that book one is lined up with book one high and all that kind of stuff. An easier way to do it, an easier way to kind of wrap your head around it. It's just to understand that the all we have to do is make sure that nothing overlaps. So if I were to go in here and grab every second book, hit P to kind of 
pull my selection out of the current object and then hit tab to get out of edit mode. So now I have two chunks of books and if we were to look at them in isolation, so back, backslash on the numpad, we can see here that none of them overlap each other, which is exactly what we want. And so for this particular example, there's not a lot of books, and it wouldn't be the end of the world to go book one, book two, book three, book four, book five, all that kind of stuff. Um, as we get going, though, we're going to be looking at multi-component objects. Like So for instance, if you were doing the, the hand of a robot, just in a single finger, you're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, and that's going to give you 24 separate objects just in the fingers, another six with the thumb, the hand, and so you're quickly going to look at things that are going to have 30, 40, 50, and that's just the hand. You get the whole robot and we're looking at 100, 200 objects. So to look at it in a way that you are selecting things that just don't overlap, so in the robot hand example, you'd be able to grab his fingertips um, and say you've got like a little ball or whatnot to kind of articulate the finger. Don't select that. We're selecting the middle chunk of the finger, the, the, the base of the finger, and we can take all of those objects and combine them as long as no two pieces of it overlap and then go back in and grab all of the knuckle type joints as they will not overlap themselves either and that way there you're able to do the hand and you could probably do it in two maybe three different shapes so now that we got this separated we need to make sure that our high also matches it up so first thing i want to do is give this a books one And a books two, give her this zero one. And I want to make sure. So book one is going to be the four, the ones that go all the way to the edge. So I'm just going to hide this, open this up, grab that, just do the same thing, grabbing the ones in the middle, hitting P to grab the selection. Tab to get back out, and we're calling this book one high, books two high, and remember this is once we start to get multi-component, this is where your naming conventions need to be exactly the same. Uh, as far as moving forward, I highly suggest getting used to uh, L-O-W, lowercase L, H-I-G-H, lowercase H as this is Substance Painter's default. And you can go in and change the default, but it doesn't stick. So every time you open it up, you will need to change that default. And that's just one more step that you're gonna to need to remember for each time. Well, get used to having a lowercase letter in front of both of them, and then it's just gonna work, which is kind of what I would suggest. Okay, so we're just looking at it here again. Books one, books two, high, high, high shelf. Books one, books two, low, 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 low. So we're just pulling this out again. I'm going to do an export, FBX, over here. Selected objects. I'm actually just going to call this bookshelf two, so don't bother overwriting the other stuff. Export, okay, that gives us our high. Opening up our low. Books one, books two, and the shelf. Grab those three. File, export, FBX. That's already checked. Command you. I want to grab bookshelf two. Look. Export. All right. So now back in substance, I'm just going to actually open new, grab our new bookshelf low. Open. Okay. Discard this one. So it's in. 
and it looks exactly the same, which is good. So we want to bake, selecting our bookshelf too high, open. And I'm going to crank this to 4K just so we can see some more of the detail when it comes out. So what we need to do here, this is the only thing that changes for a multi-component object, is we are going to, not always this time, we're going by mesh name. And then baking. So this way here, it does all the same baking run-throughs except it matches them up. So it does a, a quick bake run with books one, and then another bake run with bake, with books two, and then one with the shelf. And this way here, we're not getting the, the little bit of burn that happens when two objects kind of intersect each other, which is what we're looking for. All right. So with that done correctly, let's take a look at this. So first thing we're noticing, we don't have the shelf burnt onto the books. Even these ones that are overlapping and, and pretty much touching, there is no, no overburn on them. So everything looks great. And this is exactly how we want to do it.